again and welcome to another wild and wonderful episode of Chair Interval Training brought to you by Community Access Yellow Springs and Yellow Springs Senior Center and me, Lynn Hardman, Silver Sneakers instructor and Yellow Springs resident, longtime resident. Hey, welcome again, friend. I decided to shake things up a little bit here in this exercise studio with my wild outfit today. It's not so wild to be wearing a mask. So I hope you see me and other friends in Yellow Springs wearing them. All we'll need if we're all alone or in safe social distance with others in our um, household is a sturdy chair, a rubber ball today, and a handy jug nearly full or as full as you like of water with a lid screwed on tight and remember consult your physician before you do this or any exercise program i like to call this exercise of program the stand up sit down fight 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 with modifications adaptations but never give up we're going to use a little music to keep it lively here we are again. It's been a while, hasn't it? I'm glad to be virtually together with you. I'm going to start standing up, but as always, you can do the exercise in your chair or in the air. But safety first. Check your area. Make sure nothing's on the floor that you may slip, trip, or fall on. Maybe get your cat or your little beautiful doggy out from underfoot if they like to jump underneath. And what else? Good lighting helps us to be safe. And a good posture. Ears over shoulders over hips. And all of this adds up together to help us move with greater ease. If anything hurts, promise me you'll modify or adapt or substitute the last thing that didn't hurt and just keep moving to the best of your abilities and when you can't move at your best anymore take a rest okay we're going to preview a couple patterns as we gradually warm up first let's just take a couple of breaths ah breathing in through your nose if you can Exhaling through your mouth. And here's a pattern we've done many times, but maybe you're joining us for the first time. Always make sure you're close enough to your chair that you can check your balance because this pattern is about balance. Very simple, but maybe not easy. It sounds like this. Singles, doubles, fours. And it looks like this. We can just simply lift our knee, keeping our body in its best posture. We can always keep one hand near the chair. And these are singles, just one each leg. Four more singles, three, two, how about doubles? Two each side. Or now we're balancing, so we might need that chair. We can also tap a toe down. And that helps us to check our balance. Let's try four. Four, three, two, and now we're really balancing twice as long. You get the picture. Try one more time if you like. If you like is a handy phrase. It's always a choice. You might have noticed when you did those knee lifts for a longer time, the tops of your thighs ache. And that's especially true if you're in the chair. So you've got to be creative and substitute movements. And just make sure you've got plenty of room around you because sometimes we kick our heels back and we don't want to kick the chair. Sometimes we can lift our knees front and we don't want to knee the chair. But here's another pattern. So, this one we've never done before. Woo! 
It's good to learn new things. It keeps our brain fit. All right, this sounds like, it sounds like this. Tap, tap, one, two, three. Tap, tap, one, two, three. And then later on, for agility, we'll do it faster and it'll sound like this. Tap, tap, one, two, three. Tap, tap, one, two, three. Let's practice doing it. So we're going to try just taking that right foot, tapping your toe down, tap, tap, and march two, three, and then the left, tap, one, two, three, tap, tap, one, two, three, tap, tap. We can tap it out to the side, lowering our body, not really putting our weight in it, tap, tap, one, two, three. I'm going to show that. I want you to stay slightly behind your chair, but I'm going to come out front so you can see what I'm doing with my feet. Tap, tap. One, two, three. And you got your chair there. So we're going to do it slow. One more time each side. And then here's what it will look like going a little faster. Tap, 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 tap. One, two, three. Light on your feet. One, two, three. We can tap it out front again. What well, we need to do? Front side. Oh, one more time each side. And march it out. So that's a new pattern that involves a little bit of the A, B, C. Agility, balance, and coordination. But before we go to our next little dynamic stretch and flexibility in the chair, let's get a little stretch in the air. Walking our right leg back, pressing the heel to the ground, leaning forward for a gentle calf stretch. We jump on a long, strong diagonal. Lift to the toes and then down to the heel. Lift to the toes and now tuck your tailbone under. If I were a tiger, <laughs> I'd be tucking my tail between my legs. Let's try that with the left foot, walking it back gradually for a little gentle calf stretch. Heel on the ground, lean forward, make that long, strong diagonal. If it doesn't hurt your shoulder, if it hurts, bring it in. Up. To the toes, squeezing or contracting your calf and then relaxing, facing it on the ground, stretch a little. Now back up on the ball of the foot, shoulders on our hips, tuck your tailbone under, and limber up your spine as well as the front of your hip and thigh. All right, we're gonna sit a stretch. So as you get seated, we do know that squats can help us to maintain healthy, independent living with greater ability to do our activities of daily life. So while you sit down slow, just know you're strengthening your hips and your thighs and know that you can do one by sitting down super slow and controlled, or you can do very many. But do align your feet close with the chair so that if you accidentally sit down fast <laughs> by accident. You won't hit the ground, but it'll be landing safe in the chair. Another thing I'm gonna sound like a broken record about is water. Hydration is so important for all of our body systems, and especially our cognitive abilities. When you're getting your water or your weights or anything down low, step to the side, leaning to the side. Support your spine by bracing with your abdominals and with your free arm and then grab that other thing. That lateral flexion of the spine is kinder, gentler to your lower back. All right, we're trying to keep it safe and simple. Sitting in the end of your chair, sit tall. And let's see if we can stretch out our right leg with the toe up and the left. And today, let's try 
reaching with the same side arm. And if it feels good, let's try sticking our foot in the air, pulling the navel in, and you don't have to touch your toes, but just sort of curling your spine and breathing out each time you reach. Pull the navel in like you're zipping up your tightest outfit. Good. Now, let's slow it down so we can do a flex point flex. Flex point flex. Flex point flex. All right. We've got to work on that ankle flexibility. Let's try setting that right leg down. Supporting our weight with the knee over the left ankle. And hinge forward at the hip. So keeping the back long, long and strong. Lift your toes and your fingers up. And sit back. Pull that navel in. Draw the knee toward the chest and draw some circles with your foot. Both directions. And let's try that hamstring stretch and limbering with the left leg outstretched. Supporting on the right lap. Ah, feels good to move. Hinging forward. Lifting the toes and the fingers. Keeping the back nice and long. And then pushing down with the foot. Sit tall, hold the navel in. If this doesn't agree with your hip today, you can circle your ankle with your foot on the floor. So that's another option. And then the other direction with your foot circle. Ah, and let's walk our feet out. Get a little stretch here on the inner thighs. Chest lifted, hinge forward just a bit. Gentle opening of the thighs. And roll the shoulder. I hope my tiger outfit doesn't camouflage me with the uh, stripes on the on the wall behind me. <laughs> okay, take a deep, nice deep breath as you do. Open your chest. Ah, open your spine, and as you exhale, close your chest. Interlace those fingers if you like, and tuck your tailbone under and stretch a bit. All right, reminder, we're going to shoot for a target zone of a four to a seven on a scale of one to 10. This perceived exertion or how we feel while exercising has been proven over time to be a really good gauge of the proper intensity, especially when it's super hot outside or you're wearing a mask or something changes so that the same amount of activity might make your heart rate go higher. So you gotta pay attention to that perceived exertion chart. Or better yet, can you talk? If you can't talk while exercising, you're going too hard. All right, we're gonna do our singles, doubles, and fours. Balance exercise in the chair, it looks like this. But if you're knowing you want to get up and do it on your feet now, take your time. Situate yourself on the right side of your chair, just like we did when we were warming up, and get to it. Those of you who are seated, you're already where you need to be. I'm going to stand up and use my chair as my assistive device. You should check your area again, please. Make sure your ball's up there, out of the way. Your ball, too. And best posture, here we go. Single. Little knee lifts. They can be tiny or big. You can kind of do a little skip to my loo, darlings. <laughs> All right. Whatever you do, just make sure you can see and touch the chair at all times. And try not to kick it. Four more. Three, two, let's try doubles. Two here, two here. Double knees. Now we're balancing, so we've got that chair if we need it. 
And we can tap our toe down if we'd like. Two more doubles. Four now. Four, three, two, yes. Four, three, two. You can be raising your opposite arm. You can be wobbling a little like I just did. <laughs> but we can wobble a little, but don't be afraid to use your assistive device. If it doesn't challenge our balance a little bit, it's not going to change our balance much, is it? One more set of fours and my thighs are starting to catch fire. <laughs> so march it out. How did that feel here? It got a little tired for me, so we're going to change the way we move, especially for those of you in the chair, okay? Remember, you can always substitute Say what? I hope you're doing all right. Got to be able to talk. Go ahead and come behind your chair so you can use it. I'm going to step off to the side so you can see my feet. Or I'm actually going to step a little in front. But then I'll go back after you see what I'm doing. We're going to use a hip width or chair width squat. And your chair is right in front of you. Okay. Now we're going to lift our heels up. Hamstring curls. Keep that base of your feet sort of wide. Wide? A wide base is a stable base. But we're trying to get more of our lower body involvement with a little mini squat. It could be tiny or big. You can use your arms or just hold on to your chair. But let's do four more singles. Three, two, double time. So you see what I'm doing? I'm going to get back safely behind my chair. You keep moving there. I'm watching. Let's do two more doubles. One more double. Now four, three, two. Got our chair. We need it. Four, three, two. We can tap our toe down as well. But do try to make it just a light tap. And try to balance. Four, three, two. Good. Excellent. Four, three, two. And one more. March it out, please. Woo. How you doing? Can you breathe? Can you talk? What's your number? One to ten. You can always go back to the chair and take your rest. Or you can come over here to the side. And we're going to do those knee lifts again. With a little tiny bit of a difference, if you like. Let's start with the left knee. Now before, we were just using our arms in a cross-crawl fashion. If you want to tap across, pull your navel in. Add a tiny bit of rotation, if you like. Four more. You don't have to touch the knee if, you, if that's not comfortable for you. But if you can, and it's comfortable for you, go ahead. I said four more. Four, three, two. How about doubles? We're just adding a tiny difference here. But it does involve your core a little bit more. Two more doubles. Now fours, four, three, two, switch. That's sorry, I had to tap my foot down. Four, three, two, switch. Switch. How you doing? Switch. One more each side, if you like. If you don't, then you can just go back to whatever you do like, but try your best. And then take a rest. March it out. We're going to do one more set behind our chair. We're going to mix it up a little bit. Instead of doing hamstrings, let's combine hamstrings and hips. So stay behind your chair. And just to remind you, a hamstring curl is the knee stays down, wide base. And a hip abduction is the knees straight and up to the side. So, 
We're going to combine those in a thoughtful way. So we've got to turn our thinking cap on. Pay attention to your body. Get situated. Sort of a hip width, sort of a stance. I'm going to squirm out to the side so you can see my feet a little bit. Start with your mini squat. Down and up. Here we go. Down. And just start with hamstring curls, left and right. I'm going to call these bent because our knee keeps bending. Now try your hips. Four, three, two. Now bend. I'll call these bent. And hips straight. Four of each, okay? Four, bent. Four straight. Keep the head tall. Four bent. You can use both arms. Four straight. How about two of each on each side and then two hips? Let's do that again. Two left hamstrings, two right. Two hips, two right hips. Do it again. How are you doing? Two of each. One more set of twos. Are you with me? Two hips, each side. Now let's try fours. Four hamstrings. Switch it. Four on the other side. Nice. Four hips. I better use my chair. And four hips. Dare we do that again? Sure, hamstrings. Other one. Hips, straight. One more set of fours, hamstrings, or bent, hamstrings, bent, hips, four, three, two, one, and switch. I can feel that in my hips, yeah? How about you? Woo, march it out. We're going to shift the focus from one of balance with a little bit of aerobic activity. I felt that. Stretch that other leg up to a little bit of a focus on strength. This first set, before we get in our chair, make sure your feet are near the chair. You've got your jug or your hand weights. Best posture as you hinge your hips back. Keep your weight even in both legs. You can just hover there. Reach your tailbone back. And if you had a glass of water on each shoulder, try to balance it. You can go down slow and come up with a little bit of power. You can do one slow sit down and strengthen your hips and your thighs. Or you can do several. Ending up safely in your chair, time for another sip of water. We've had an extended batch of hot weather. And this can wear us down and gradually bring our energy levels down. We need that water um, for so much more than, than uh, just rehydration. It's so good for our immune system. And I said earlier, for our brain. And I'm sure you know, if you're dehydrated, it can cause a loss of balance. Dizziness can um, occur, especially if you take blood pressure medications and you get slightly dehydrated. So let's stay hydrated and stay happy. We're going to step to the side. Lean to the side. Get our handy dandy liquid container with a handle. We're going to do a couple of exercises that involve the option to squat. Okay, so I'm going to ask you to get your hips back in your chair. If your ball's in the way, you can put it elsewhere. I'm going to just situate mine. Take your right hand and hold your container or your weight with the right hand. Keep the wrist straight. Put your left hand under. If it's a heavy weight, you'll need to do this with both hands. We're going to do two sets. The next one will have the left on top and the right underneath. 
we're going to keep our head up, get our hips back, hinge slightly forward, and reach down, and then pull up. Lead with your elbows, if you can. Nobody's next to you, so you don't have to worry about poking them in the nose. Just lift till the jug is about chin high. Don't need to go any higher. Now, this is an upright row that strengthens our shoulders, our biceps, and our upper back. If you wanted to add a squat, your body is down, all the weight is down. Your body is up, all the weight is up. Get your hips back, keep your head up. Imaginary glasses of water on your shoulders are trying to stay upright. It's an upright row. It's very much like you lift heavy things in real life. Wait, we are lifting a heavy thing in real life. <laughs> and it's so good for us. All right. We've done quite a few. You can stop or you can continue. Now we're going to move on to that next exercise. This is kind of new and different and wacky. Put your jug on the ground in front of you. Get your body well back, or you're already back in your chair. Hold the, the chair with your hands. Pull your navel in to support your lower back. Don't lift your feet off the floor, but squeeze that jug. Slide it away from you. Slide it towards you. So we're going to work the hamstrings, the quadriceps, the inner thighs. We're keeping the feet just sliding over the floor. This might be harder if you have a carpet surface that you're working on. Do your best. Now, if it suits you, you can try pulling on a chair. Pull on the chair and pull the navel in. So it's an isometric, so we've got to breathe. And you're squeezing that jug with your feet together, okay? This is, I really feel this. Do you feel this? Do as many as you care to, but if you could do it for much longer than a minute, we probably need to put more water in the jug or remove your roller skates that were sliding over the floor so easily. All right, we're gonna do the other side of that upright row, that second set. So hips well back in the chair, heels touching the front legs of the chair if you're going to add that optional squat. Take your left hand, lift the jug, get your tailbone way back and your shoulders and your head up, supporting underneath as needed with the right hand. Reach down low, pull it up, Lead with the elbows. Now some of you, your hands might be small enough and your jug might be, the handle might be big enough that you could hold the handle with both hands. That's great. Mine doesn't work so well like that. So I had to add a second set <laughs> so we can make it even. Now, if you add the squats, your body's down while the jug is down. Your body's up and your hips are squeezing together as your jug comes up. All right, fun with laundry detergent or vinegar or bleach bottles, or maybe an old milk jug. <laughs> Reduce, reuse, recycle, right? It's the little things we do that add up. So do your best. Keep your head up. Take a rest when you need it. And I'm done. How about you? I'm gonna set this bottle down, but carefully stepping to the side, leaning to the side, checking that lid. This is actually my friendly neighborhood video studios jug of vinegar because I used mine and I forgot to bring it back to the studio. Time for more water. I'm also going to check where we're at with our music here. our agility pattern next.
Remember during the, the uh, warm up, I previewed the one that sounded like tap, tap, one, two, three. But I didn't show you that you can do this in a chair and it will give you great benefits whether you're seated or standing. Now, if you know you want to stand up, go ahead and situate yourself over here on the left side. If you would, just for fun, because we were over there already a lot. So if you're seated, come to the edge of your seat so you can move your feet better. If you're standing, make sure you can see and touch your chair. I'm going to demonstrate first from the chair. Join me from wherever you're at right now. Sit or stand tall and tap, tap, one, two, three, and with the right, tap, one, two, three. Good. One, two, three. Excellent. If you're standing, Remember, you're not stepping into that foot, you're tapping. So you are doing a little bit of balance, agility, and coordination with this pattern, and that's why I love it. I think I tried to say that earlier, but I got off track. <laughs> that never happens. <laughs> awesome. Okay, we're going nice and slow, just learning the pattern. Let's add a little bit of speed and agility. Here we go. Tap, tap, one, two, three. Tap, tap, one, two, three. Tap, tap, one, two, three. Good. Now you keep tapping your toes wherever you are. I'm going to transition to standing. You keep going. Tap, tap, one, two, three. 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 Hopefully I got back in sync with you. You can pull your arm like you're pulling a train whistle. That's something we do in everyday life. I try to make analogies, but sometimes they just don't work. One, two, three. Almost like you're jogging. But you can fake it. Tap, tap, move, move, move. Tap, tap. Got your chair. Good. Move yourself a little bit back. So if you wanted to, you could transition to a side tap. Tap, tap, one, two, three, tap, tap. Got your chair. Good. Now if you wanted to add a challenge, always making sure you can touch your chair if you need to. You could look to the left and look to the right. And I'll just add a little visual vestibular challenge to challenge your balance a little more without hurting your neck. Good. Four more. Three. Two. One. Just march it out. How are you doing on our perceived exertion one to ten scale? Say it a little louder. I couldn't hear you, please. Did I hear four to seven? Oh, perfect! <laughs> Yay! Well, just for fun, I'm gonna move behind my chair. We're gonna use those front taps and the side taps and combine them. Actually, that won't work so well behind our chair. Let me see if I can figure this out. We might end up kicking our chair, so. Let's take our taps back. Everybody with me? I'm not even with me. Well, let's get it together, huh? <laughs> Best posture. Make sure you've got a clear, safe place to, to move your feet. Best posture. Again, keep your back long and strong as you tap back two times. Tap, tap. One, two, three. Back, back. One, two, three. Keep those imaginary glasses of water upright on your shoulders. Tap, tap. Make sure you can touch your chair if you need it. We're going slow. Tap back. So we're just barely tapping. Let's do one more slow. Now tap a little faster. Tap, tap. One, two, three. Reach, reach. 
as tall, belly pulling in, but keep the wall. Did you hear that? Good. Tap, tap. Make sure you can see and touch your chair. Now, since we're tapping back, let's try tapping side. Tap, tap. I think this way we won't kick our chair if we choose to combine them for a little coordination. Let's do two more on each side with the two side taps. Now, side back. Ooh. Side back. Side back. Side back. Side back. Side back. See if you can float it. Like you're swimming. Side back. One, two, three. I forgot the one, two, three. Oh, so much going on here today. <laughs> This is a new pattern, did I tell you? So we can sweep that leg and work on our posture, pulling our navel in, and our crown of our head up, squeezing our hip. Or we can go back to the side, back, tap, 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 tap. Following with our arms, which is not easy. Almost like we're swimming. upstairs don't mind. Just as long as we're not, whoop, that was wrong. Side, back. Just as long as I'm not kicking the bucket, you know? <laughs> you either. I hope. Oh, I messed that up. Let's march it up. How are you doing? Do you know what? Right? We're going to mix that pattern up one more time. And this time, maybe I'll, I'll do better. But first, how are you feeling with your breathing? Can you talk? It's actually kind of hard to talk while you're exercising. I can vouch. And even harder to make sense. <laughs> okay, we're going to do that tap, tap again. But we're going to try to take out the tap very gradually so we know where we feel safe and confident. And then it'll be a little lift, lift, but quick. Start slow with that tap, tap, left foot, step to three, right, tap, march to three, tap, tap, pull your navel in, head up, tap, tap. See if you can do that without actually touching the toe, knowing that you can if you need to. Good. So it's like we're faking a tap, but we can put our foot down if we need to, whenever we want. We can use our chair whenever we need. So make sure you can see and touch your chair before we go to our other speed. If you're ready, tap, tap. Tap, tap, one, two, three, tap, tap. You can put your foot down, get the timing, get the pattern, and then when you want, lift, lift, or down, down. No tap, no tap. Do you get it? We can try it in the front, or we can try it front, back, front, back, one, two, three. Front, back. That's hard. You got your chair if you need it. Tap, tap. Tap, tap. Pull your navel in. Keep your core solid and stable so that you're just getting that movement from the hip and the knee. Good. Front and back. Tap, tap. Or touch, nearly touch. Or no touch. So you have to kind of know where the floor is, and you've got to have that chair where you can reach it in case you need that balance check. Woo. Hey, I wonder if this pattern would work side to side. That might be another day because we're running out of time for this pattern. And I want to ask you while you do it, how are you feeling? 
If that wasn't enough cardiovascular exercise for you to get to a close to a four, I feel great, I can tell I'm exercising, or a seven. Hmm. I can do this workout, but it's tough. Maybe you could make it bigger, or just supplement this exercise with other kinds of aerobic activity, maybe one that's a steady state, like a long, brisk walk outdoors in the fresh air when the weather permits. We're gonna change the focus to one of strength, which happens in a minute or less. But good cardiovascular exercise, we need to strive for 10 to more, so we can strengthen that heart, strengthen your lungs. Strengthen your hips and your thighs with your squat. And if you just feel like sitting down, make sure you're in a good position and hit the seat, soft landing. Weight is equal in both legs. Squeeze your hips forward and together, each time we come up. You can go down, hover a little, and then come up with full power. Put a tiger in your tank. <laughs> getting warmer and warmer in this cool basement. I think it's my fault. <laughs> All right, once you're seated, get another sip of water. Step to the side, knee to the side. Take your time so that you don't injure your back. genuine me, the real deal. We're going to use our ball next. Whoops. <laughs> All right. And we're going to consult our cheat sheet. All right. That's right. We're going to do some, some hip abduction and some hip adduction. So earlier we were squeezing the jug with our feet. This time we're going to squeeze the ball. We'll have to get to the edge of our seat. And if you notice, I've got this blue band here uh, just to pull my whole outfit together. Now actually, one of you guys out there suggested using the, the band, which we were using in class a while ago, to keep from sliding back in their chair. Excellent idea. Sitting at the edge of your seat, feet a little closer to the knees, fall above the bony knee joint or the titanium or hydrate ceramics or whatever you've got. Squeeze that ball like you mean it. Like you're trying to pop it. Each time you squeeze, that's the best time to exhale. But you can breathe at your own rhythm, just breathe. When we're doing these nearly isometric, not a whole lot of range of motion exercises, it, um, it can make our blood pressure rise unnecessarily, perhaps dangerously. So promise me you're breathing. If you talk, I know you're breathing. Now, if you want to add on to this inner thigh squeeze, dig your heels down, fire up those hamstrings, pull your toes up, fire up those shin muscles, squeeze your glutes together, fire up those butt muscles, and if you want to add a very difficult, and perhaps not for everyone, upper body exercise, push the heels of the hand into the chair. Test that gradually, pushing, making sure you don't have any pain in your wrist, elbow, or shoulder, or neck. And if it feels good, you can lift your hips and squeeze them up and add a little glute bridge to your chair. Dip, strengthening all of those lower body muscles, now adding some triceps, chest, and shoulder muscles. Doing just what you want, not too much, just enough to feel perhaps a little shaky, a little quivery. Uh, maybe a little dull, achy burning along the body of the muscles that were our target muscles, but no sharp, sudden shooting pain. That means stop. Okay, 
We're going to go on and do a little bit of ab work. Just sitting near the edge of your chair. Tuck your tailbone under. Don't worry, you will get to the hip abduction. Tighten up your tummy like someone's going to pop you in the belly. But you can pop yourself in the belly with the ball and breathe while you're doing it. Lean back, tuck your chin down. Slide forward, keeping both feet paced into the ground. Good. So you can slide like this, trying to reach those shoulder blades and tap the, the chair back behind you. Or you can just keep your back there and lift one knee and then the other. We always got to have at least one foot on the floor to protect our lower back. The other thing, the main muscle group that protects your lower back are the abdominals. So pull them in like you're sucking it all in for a photo. That's what my friend Vicky used to say. Now, let's say you want to add more. You can lift that ball up high and down. Reach. Ooh, my feet started to come off the floor. That, that's against the rule. I don't want to hurt my lower back, so I've got to slow down, maybe. How about you? If you wanted to add some grip strength here, squeeze the ball. Four fingers against the heel of the hand. Or squeeze the ball against the heel of your hand. Keep working. I'm going to show you what I mean by that. Keep doing your abs sit-ups. So this is squeezing with the heel of the hand against the four fingers, taking the maybe arthritic thumb out of the equation. And this is squeezing with the thumb opposing. Some people think that the opposing thumb is what shows that human beings are superior to other animals, but really it's our ability to accessorize <laughs> humor. Humor helps the heart. Okay, as promised, we're going to strengthen the outsides of our hips. We can do it in our chair. I'll demonstrate it first here, and then I'm going to show you a standing option. As always, whenever you have the option, get set up. Make sure you can touch the chair. Use it as a safety check. If you're seated or standing, best, tallest, longest, strongest version of your spine. Take the ball against the outside of the right thigh. This will also help strengthen the shoulder stabilizers. And keeping that right foot and the left foot on the ground, push against that. See if you can slide that right foot out, keeping the knee on top of the ankle. Breathe each time, and you're pushing with the hand against it. Try to stabilize the body, and you can feel those abdominals working. So this is what it looks like seated. We're going to do two more on the right side. And then set yourself up for the left. If you're behind the chair, you might have to scooch over to the left side. Or just a little behind your chair where you can still use it for balance. Sit or stand tall. Push and reach. Each time you push is an excellent time to exhale, but just go with your own pace. Breathe how it feels natural, normal to you. Now, try sliding that foot out, stabilizing your body. This looks super easy, maybe. Well, I wouldn't say it's easy. It's a simple movement, but we're using a lot of core, a lot of the shoulder stabilizers, and of course the hip abductors, the outer muscles on the thighs. Really important for our balance. Well, you can do your second set on the right in your chair. I'm going to transition to standing, show you what it looks like there. If you were standing and you now want to sit down, you're right. By Jove, you're right. <laughs> okay, if you're standing up here, make sure your left hand can touch the chair. Pull the navel in, ball at the hip, whether you're standing or seated. Dorsiflex that toe as you lift. Push against the ball as you lift and exhale. Keep the body straight and strong and tall. Whether you're seated or 
or standing. We're working on balance, hip strength, hip abduction, pulling the navel in, strengthening our core, and strengthening those shoulder stabilizers that keep your shoulder from popping out should you fall and extend your arm. But I don't want you to fall, and if you do, you're better to think like a ball and tuck down and get low and roll. More on that later. Last strength exercise, left side hip abduction. Best posture. Pull the navel in, and on the left thigh, fall. Lift that left toe. I don't know, who turned up the, the music? Where's that? So we're balancing. We can grab our chair if we need. We've got to breathe. Pushing into that ball as hard as we care to, knowing that if we challenge ourselves a little bit, we will get stronger. The key to getting stronger is the appropriate amount of challenge and doing it regularly. I about had it. I'm going to do one more. Woo. We're going to transition to the chair for some seated stretches. But since we're standing, there's a couple things that are so much easier to do standing. I apologize if you're in your chair. But if you want to get up one more time, that's okay. If you want to stay in your chair, you're right. We're going to do our calf stretches. And I'm going to turn to the side. You can use a wall or any sturdy grab bar or a counter. Walk your right foot back or your left. So your heel is on the ground. Lean forward, make a long, strong diagonal straight at the knee. A straight knee calf stretch stretches the larger, more outer head of the calf muscles. But if you have plantar fasciitis or Achilles tendonitis, shift your weight into that rear leg and bend the knee a bit. See what I did there? I went from a straight knee, shifting weight back, pushing into the heel to a bent knee. This bent knee calf stretch is now focusing a little bit more on stretching the underlying soleus muscle. And you might not feel the difference, but it will make a difference to your calf flexibility and your ankle flexibility. I'm going to come to the other side and do the other leg. You can stay where you're at. By the way, I'll show you how to do a seated calf stretch if you're in your chair and wanting to be there or needing to stay there. So here's our straight knee calf stretch. Leaning forward and shifting our weight ever so slightly. Bending the knee. You might have to narrow your stance to do that. It kind of feels like you're sitting back into this hind quarter and pushing the heel down. That knee calf stretch. Some people report that they feel that coming towards the front of their shin or the ankle. You might not feel it. Let's get seated, and I'll show you. Actually, I'll come a little closer and pretend I'm sitting. No, I won't, because my feet will go off the camera. And to show you, I'm going to turn sideways and show you how you can get a calf stretch a little bit in the chair. You go from sitting straight up and down at right angles to sliding your heel back ever so slightly, pushing on it, and kind of leaning forward, and you'll get that bent knee calf stretch. If you want to get a seated straight knee calf stretch, these uh, hamstring stretches that we did at the beginning are great because our knee is straight. I'm going to turn that down a little. So sitting at the edge of your seat, Relax and start to slow your breathing. Think of breathing under your nose. And 
exhaling through your mouth. I had a good workout today. I had so much fun. And to be honest, as we lift our toe and start to hinge forward, I'm sometimes I'm not all that fired up to, let's say, go to the basement on a rainy day. But you know what? After I get all set up and I try to act happy and I exercise with you virtually, even though I'm all alone on a rainy day in the basement, I feel so much better. I hope you do too, and I hope you continue to take great care of yourselves. It's been a long time, hasn't it? And it looks like we're in it for a lot more of a long time doesn't mean, let's try the other way, it doesn't mean that we can't socialize with our nearest, dearest friends or even just our neighbors across the street. We just have to be creative and careful and do it safely. I sent out an um, email to my email group today, if you didn't already see it, talk about the one, if there were only one thing, but of course we can do many, if there were only one thing we could do to really help our whole country and indeed our whole world, it would be a little bit more of the really careful, well-fitting mask wearing. Yellow Springs, I'm preaching to the choir, right? We've already we're ahead of our time. But here's what we got to do. Like with any other healthy change, we've got to begin to grease the wheels and have those tough conversations. And it isn't just about wearing masks. I come across a lot of people in my other work that are very reticent to wearing a mask. And I've had some difficult conversations. And these kinds of difficult conversations aren't just about masks, either. They're about racism. They're about Black Lives Matters. They're about our economy. And these things are really heavy. And they hurt, sometimes they hurt our heart, literally. So, as we hinge forward, sitting sideways, and get that left leg back, I'm urging you all, I'm encouraging you all to take really good care of yourself every day. Allow yourself to be sad, but don't, don't stay there too long before reaching out, okay? There are so many resources, and at the end of today's show, I, not me, actually, Sean Devine, our fabulous Community Access Station Manager is going to run some phone numbers and some websites to help you reach out for professional licensed certified mental and emotional health. Because at the beginning of this thing, I'm an optimist, but I didn't think it was going to go away as some of our leaders said. Um, and I was hoping it wouldn't last this long, but it's looking like it's going to be even longer than I thought. Anyway, let that knee drift down. Let your heart drift up. Breathe in. Know this, you are not alone. Our little village and indeed our bigger state we are in this together, literally, albeit with social, physical distance. Stretch to the side. I am continually grateful for a lot of the strong leadership 
that we have. Let's open our chest, open our heart. Um, a lot of the interconnectivity we have here in this small village, like it or not, we, we have to be somewhat tolerant of each other because we all know we run into each other at Tom's Market or downtown or in the, uh, the wherever we go. I kind of jokingly say that the Venn diagram of, of overlap in Yellow Springs looks more like a circle. <laughs> We're going to take some time for some just checking in with our heart, checking in with our lungs, checking in with our body, and kind of just let your mind drift like white fluffy clouds in a big blue sky. Sit back in your chair. Take your time as you lower your gaze or close your eyes to rest your shoulders and the weight of them, literally and figuratively, down. Feel grounded. Let gravity take all of the stress in your head and let it just sort of drift down like water off a duck's back. Or drift up like clouds in the sky. And just take a few wonderfully invigorating, effortless breaths in through your nose. out through your mouth. Practicing relaxing breathing, mindful breathing. Sometimes you can count or measure and see how you're doing. So for instance, I could count at a slow steady beat while inhaling and while exhaling. So it might sound like this. Inhale, one, two, three, four, Exhale, one, two, three, four, five. And you might notice if you're becoming, with practice, a little better at mindful breathing, that your exhale will take a little longer than your inhale. And it's good to be able to measure and test sometimes to know that you're doing better. So just keep breathing, filling your lungs from the bottom to the top. Each time you breathe in, especially through your nose, you're helping calm your parasympathetic system. You're helping to reduce your stress. You're helping your body's immune system be more at ease, not having a big fight. Anyway, I hope you're staying safe and sane and strong and connected at home. So remember, those resources that you see on the screen there, they're there for you. Um, I call the chair an assistive device for our balance. Um, a mask is an assistive device for our neighbors and ourselves to, as a shield to an airborne virus or bacteria or, or allergens even. And these phone numbers are an assistive device for your total well-being. Um, don't hesitate to use them. The only shame is when we don't use an assistive device when it could benefit us. So wherever you go, stay safe, stay strong. Keep it safe and simple. Bye for now. Thank you.